Good morning, children. I am very happy to meet you all again through this online classes. Are you all happy, children, for this online classes? Today, we are going to continue the same lesson, Introduction to Microeconomics. Shall we recall whatever we have learned in the previous class? We have learned the scope of economics. Then, economics is an art or science. If economics is a science, whether economics is a positive science or normative science, and some of the basic concepts in economics, they are price, equilibrium, market, value, income, revenue. These are the basic concepts in economics. Children, shall we learn the methods of economics? There are two methods. They are deductive method and inductive method. There are two methods of economics. They are deductive method and inductive method. Deductive method, it is nothing but we are going to come to a conclusion on the basis of some facts. We are going to come to a conclusion on the basis of some facts and this is known as de deductive method. It is also known as abstract method or analytical method. Next one is inductive method. This method is a process of reasoning and come to the conclusion or we are going to derive certain general principle and this is known as inductive method. And now we are going to learn the steps of deductive method. That means the analyst must have a clear and precise idea of the problem. The analyst must have a clear and precise idea of the problem. Then from that when he has a clear idea, then he has to take some assumptions. Assumptions of the theory are to be precise. That means it should be clear or accurate. Then from that he is going to take some hypothesis. Hypothesis it is, it is an idea or explanation based on some fact but that has not yet been proved. So that is known as the hypothesis. So he is going to get some hypothesis and then and that hypothesis will be verified based on the uh, real events in the world or from the statistical method he is going to verify. These are the steps of deductive method. Children, shall we learn the steps of inductive method? Inductive method, it is a process of reasoning from particular truth to general principle. So, this general, generalizations of particular uh, principle will be based on three methods. They are experimentation, observation and statistical method. So, the steps of inductive method. First, the data are collected and systematically arranged and the conclusions are drawn. Then, then the and then they are going to observe the data. Then they are going to observe the data based on and then the conclusion will be drawn and then generalization of the data and then hypothesis that is they are going to come make a guess hypothesis it is nothing but a guess based on some facts and then verification of the hypothesis these are the steps of inductive method then i think you all know the meaning of microeconomics in the last class we have learned so what do you mean by micro micro means small it deals with a single industry or single firm. All the problems of the single industry will be discussed and that is known as microeconomics. Now we are going to learn the importance of microeconomics. So why we have to learn the microeconomics? It is to understand the operation of an economy. It means to what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce. That will be decided to understand the operation of an economy and to provide tools for economic policies. What are the tools we are using? Where, what are the policies we are using? Monetary policy, fiscal policy, all these policies we are using. So the tools for economic policies will be decided to examine the condition of an economic welfare. Welfare means happiness or comfortable living of the group of people. So, whether the people are able to get the happiness or all the uh, infrastructure facilities. Then, efficient utilization of resources. Whether the resources are utilized properly. There should not be any wastage of resources. And then, 
useful in international trade so a country will be developed only if we are going to have a international trade a trade with other country so so in micro economics will be useful in international trade then it will be useful in decision making as a economy they are going to make important decision for that micro economics is useful useful in decision making optimal resource allocate allocation that is we are we are going to use the resources in a proper way we are not going to waste any resources whether the resources are used efficiently then basis for prediction prediction means we are going to uh, determine for the future also prediction we are going to determine for future then price determination to determine the price also this micro economics is very much important for the economy so these are the importance of micro economics to understand the operation of an economy to provide tools for economic policies to examine the condition for economic welfare efficient utilization of resources useful in international trade useful in decision making optimal resource allocation basis for prediction and price determination these are the importance of micro economics and shall we learn the meaning of economic laws or the nature of economic laws so what do you mean by law a law is a casual relation between two or more than two phenomena phenomena the meaning of phenomena is a fact or event in the nature of society for example acid rain is not a nature phenomena it is caused by pollution and then economic laws are are called as statement of tendencies then economic laws are not precise as we when we compare to the physical sciences physical sciences that is physics and chemistry how we come to the conclusion we take them to the laboratory we conduct experiment and then we come to the conclusion so they are exact they are accurate or clear whereas the exact economic laws are not precise because in economics we are learning about human being so that is why economic is called as human science or social science so economic laws are not precise and accurate when we compare to with that of so physical science next one children now we are going to learn the subdivisions of economics that means economics has been divided to various subdivisions they are consumption production exchange and distribution so consumption so consumption is the starting point of all the economic activity okay human wants under consumption is the starting points of the economic activity in this we will learn the characteristics of human wants diminishing utility and the consumer surplus etc production production is the transformation of input input into output that is the inputs are all the raw material everything and when we produce the product we get the output as a product that process is known as production so to produce the product we need certain factors of production they are land labor capital and organization we need one place we need laborers we need capital and we need an organization so these are the factors of production with these factors of production we produce the product or we convert the input into output and that process is known as production exchange exchange is concerned with the price distribution price distribution of the uh, determination in different market forms so consumption is possible only if the produced commodity is available or placed in the hands of a consumer only if exchange takes place the consumer is going to get satisfaction and that process is known as exchange of goods distribution production is the result of the coordination of the factors of production i think children you all know the factors of production land labor capital and organization so that the to produce a commodity we need all these 
uh, factors of production the commodity is produced with the effort of land labor capital and organization and the the produced wealth has to be distributed among the cooperative factors it means the rewards has to be given for the various factors of production for the land it is rent for the labor it is wages and for the capital it is interest and for and for the organization it is profit so these are the various reward for the factors of production and this is known as distribution so these are the four subdivisions of economics or the various aspects of economics production consumption exchange and distribution hey how are you all are you all fine today shall we discuss what all we were learning in the google classroom we were learning about economic methods there are two methods deductive and inductive method and the steps of these two methods nature of economic laws and also the importance of microeconomics then the subdivisions of economics they are consumption production exchange and distribution okay children i hope you